Hey guys, um, when I remember when I was um, a few years back, the first, I was in a meeting and, and there were people laying hands on someone and they were praying for this guy and one of the people laying hands on this guy started speaking in tongues and um, I don't know if, if you've ever heard speaking in tongues, you'll know it sounds really crazy, you know. And I was sitting there and I was like thinking, I was really um, new to these kind of things, the spiritual things. And um, I was like sitting there, I was like thinking, this is probably pretty demonic or something, you know, this is, this is really crazy, this is really weird, what's going on, I was really feeling uncomfortable and, and um, stuff like that. But um, a few years later, I was in my bedroom one day, I was praying and... And I was like, Lord, I wanna, I wanna know more about these spiritual gifts. I wanna know more about these things that I read in the Book of Acts because um, later, obviously, I realized that speaking in tongues is actually really biblical, right? Um, and then one night, I was, I was praying by my bedside, and and suddenly, I just started speaking in tongues, and I, and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, um, I wanna clear up. And since then, this has been a few years ago. Since then, I've learned a lot about speaking in tongues, and I'd like to share some of that with you backed with scripture because I know a lot of us we really I was really skeptical about speaking tongues if it's even for today or you know what it's about um, but I just want I'd, I'd like to share with you some of the scripture reference and why we speak in tongues what it's for and um, yeah so I'm just gonna start in act 19 uh, right here and um, I want to read to you a cool story where Paul met um, a few Christians basically and um he prayed for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, but let me just read it to you. Um, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Because back then, this was a really new thing. The Holy Spirit has just been poured out. Um, so Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? And they said, John's baptism. We know John, John's baptism is the one where you go into the water. So Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There are about 12 men at all. So... Paul got there as a few men. He asked them, "Have you been baptized um, in the in the Holy Spirit?" And they're like, "What's Holy Spirit?" You know, and he just explained to them there's actually a difference between the baptism of water that John did, baptism of repentance, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then what happened is Paul laid his hands on them and he prayed for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What then happened is these people started speaking in tongues and prophesying, and um, so immediately we we see speaking in tongues is associated with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, I can tell you right off the bat that every single person that I've prayed for who for the baptism of the Holy Spirit have spoken in tongues if they haven't received the gift of tongues yet. See, speaking in tongues is a sign. Speaking in tongues is the sign that, that confirms that the baptism of the Holy Spirit has just happened. It's a sign, that it, it's a gift that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So then you might be thinking, well, I've, I think I've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, but I haven't spoken in tongues yet, right? And and then you're asking, well, have I been baptized? Was I really baptized in the Holy Spirit now, or am I not? What's going on? You know, so I want to just clear that out for you, because what often happens is we pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and one or two things happen. Either number one is they just start speaking in tongues like that. It just comes and comes and comes. Or what happens is... Um, it just doesn't happen. And it, this is often the case when people are really fearful, they're really um, afraid, or they're you know they're not confident. Or so what happens then is a lot of time people they just keep quiet, they shut their mouth, and they don't speak. So even though they're receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because when we pray for someone to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in faith, it's a promise that they will receive it. It's not we don't even have to worry about that. Well, something that can happen is the enemy often comes and he puts a fear on people in that process of praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So then these people don't pray in tongues. Although they receive the gift, they don't exercise it. Because just like praying for healing or prophesying or wisdom knowledge, all these things are actions. You can't operate in the spiritual gift without acting. It's not something that just comes. Sometimes speaking in tongues just comes out. I've seen it happen. But... I'm going to say most of the time it's, it's an action. It's something you need to really go and do. So... 
when I pray for someone to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I tell them, listen, um, and they're and let's say they're struggling and they're not speaking in tongues, and, and then I'll just pray peace over them. I'll pray fear, I command fear to leave them, you know, and um, and then I'll just start speaking in tongues over them, and then I'll tell them, so just open your mouth and start speaking, you know, and that sounds crazy, but the Holy Spirit then comes and starts and, and brings the words into their minds, and um, and then they just start speaking, you know. Um, so, so if you've if you, if you think you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit but you haven't spoken tongues yet, the chances are that the enemy is stealing this from you, and you just need to go out and speak and and just do it and step out and just do it in faith because speaking in tongues is an act of faith, just like anything that we do that is spiritual. Okay. Um, so I want to. Now a lot of you might be thinking, ah, oh, I don't even think this gift of tongues is for today. What? Or you're thinking, what is the role of it? It's so weird, you know. It's um, first off, the carnal mind can't understand speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues sounds crazy to the carnal mind, to our minds, our flesh. It sounds, what is this? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. But we serve a, a, a God that works in spiritual ways as well. And um, the gift of tongues is actually a heavenly language that is not, even though there's audible words coming out. It's what happens in the spirit, in the spiritual realm, what is that's important. And we can't see what's happening there always, uh, well, from our, with our physical eyes. Um, but there is always something happening. Um, this, when we speak in tongues, we, we utter words that, that the physical, our bodies, cannot attain, that cannot speak. So, speaking in tongues is a great tool. For if you, you know, if you've prayed and you're feeling like, I don't know what to say, I don't know how to pray, I don't know. It's just like... You know, I don't know what to pray. Then speaking in tongues is a great avenue to go to. Speaking in tongues is mostly a personal gift. It's mostly a thing that's used in personal settings when you're alone in your bedroom behind closed door in your secret place in front of God, or it's a place where um, it can also be used in churches. But um, it's mostly a personal uh, gift. I'd like to read to you 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18. I thank God, this is Paul speaking, and he says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So right here, Paul is giving away his secret. He's saying, I speak in tongues more than all of you. This is why I am so spiritual. This is why I've got such a good relationship with God. That's why I hear God so well. All right. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. So he's saying that I'd rather speak five words in, in English or in, in his language than, than, than 10,000 words or whatever in, in tongues, right? Because speaking in tongues does not edify the body unless there is an interpreter. I want to skip to 14 verse 26. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together as in a church, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, um, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. All right. So he says, do not do it. Basically, in, in contrast, he's saying, do not do anything that does not build the church. Right. Because we'd rather have produ a productive time in church where everything that is said and done in, for the people is edifying the body. He then further says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at most three, he's giving a specific instruction right here, two or at most three people speak in tongues, one at a time, and someone must interpret. That's what he says right here. So, someone must interpret in a church setting when, when someone is speaking in tongues loudly. If that's not happening, then... No one is being built up. No one's being edified. It's not. It's not. It doesn't mean anything for the church. It means something for that person, maybe to build them up in their, in their heart. But it doesn't mean anything in the church. Now, are you saying, PD, that we can't speak in tongues at church at all, or, or without an interpreter? No, I'm saying, I don't believe there's anything wrong with speaking in tongues, so, quietly for yourself, to edify yourself, to build yourself up, to, 
oftentimes we speak in tongues and then we get revelation like it just comes right the other issue is and the word also states this is when we speak in tongues and an unbeliever comes in he's gonna think this is demonic this is weird i need to get out of here that's how i felt the first time i saw someone speaking in tongues so we need to be very careful the way we use this amazing spiritual gift it's an amazing gift but it needs to be used correctly it needs to be used either in a personal setting or one at a time speaking in tongues in a church setting with an interpreter all right so all these things are given to us all these instructions as paul is writing to the church of corinthians because it's for today because it's for the church um after christ it's for today it's for and i've seen amazing things happen i've seen people just start speaking in tongues and they're like what am I doing? Because they, they, don't, they haven't heard of the theology behind it yet. They don't even know what it is. And they're speaking in tongues and they're like, whoa, what am I doing? This is weird. And I'm like, you're speaking in tongues. This is amazing. You're receiving a gift, right? So um, this is for today. It's it's an amazing gift. And, and God, as Paul said, I wish for all of you to speak in tongues, right? So this is not a gift for one person, for two people, or for the pastor, or for, this is for everyone. And it's a gift that absolutely edifies your you and can edify the body and um so pursue it relentlessly and um if you if you haven't done it yet if you haven't spoken in tongues you're going before god and say lord i want this i want to know how to do this you should help me to do this you know and step out of faith and, and just do it right and um also um if, if, if you know someone who can pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and if you've, if you've only been baptized in, in water um, with John's baptism, such as the church that, that Paul is writing to in the, in, in the book of Corinthians, um, and find, try and find someone who can pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who understands what that is and, and what it means. And God is going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit as well, because they are two separate things. But I'm going to make a teaching about the baptism um, a bit later. But yeah, I hope this blesses you. Have an amazing day. God loves you so much. And um, uh, just subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to, if you if you're interested in, in learning more about this stuff. Um, and and may, may God just bless you uh, tremendously, tremendously.